Discipleship Live. How about this? We have a live studio audience. If you don't know a lot about that, contact us because you can be here with us too. It is super fun sitting here and um, watching everything go on and taking a part in it. So welcome to Discipleship Live, and tonight you're in for a treat. Grab your notebooks, grab your pens. You're going to be taking notes. I know it. The whole theme is two by two. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but let's first talk a little bit about this past Sunday. It was See You Go Sunday, which was phenomenal. And, Ray, I know you had to work this past Sunday, but what is your favorite See You Go that you've done? Uh, it's been a while since I've done a See You Go, but... um. I went with Jeremy, Alex, and Cohen to Broadway, and we prayed for a couple who were together, and as we prayed for them, we kept seeing them throughout the day, mm -hmm. which was a little bit weird, but it was like it was meant to be, so I think God yeah. put us in that place to pray for them. I think so, too, and maybe them seeing you also throughout the day just kind of reiterated what you did with them and that it what you weren't there just to do one thing or whatever, you are actually there for other people, too, as well. Yes, you never know what God has planned. All right, let's go over to the audience, and let's ask a few questions. So what about you, Stephanie? How about you with your favorite uh, See You Go? Yeah, so my favorite See You Go was just this past Sunday. Um, I stayed at the Hub, and we learned how to do the visual arts and it was beautiful where I had another thought of what it actually was before, but not until you're in it and, and learning about it and doing it will it, I mean, it was just amazing. And it's, it was such a beautiful way to focus on God and ask him to help lead the others that were going out into the community. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Jane, what about you? Uh, we go to the nursing home, so that is my favorite, doing a worship service for them, or the assisted living. And that's awesome. That's incredible. A lot of them don't have families like we've heard about before, and so just being there. What about anybody in the back? What is your favorite See You Go? <laughs> favorite would be, I can't, it's hard to put a finger on uh, favorite, but I will say every time that, that there's opportunity to, to do what's at the heart of See You Go and, and just be the heart, the hands and feet of Jesus is amazing. I will say this, this past See You Go, we went out with a couple, it was Kayla and myself, Uriah, Cohen, in Memphis, Memphis, me and Kayla went out and it was just so neat uh, being a part of that team in Memphis, just showing uh, the boldness of God to, to pray for people and ask if they need any prayer and just sharing the love of Christ. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. You're never too old and you're never too young, right? God can use everybody and he does. All right. So we have a skit coming up, a video. So we're going to send it all on. And listen, social media question tonight is, go ahead and ask. What is your two favorite animals? Two favorite animals. We have a theme of two by two tonight. So what's your two favorite animals? We'll be back with you and we're sending it over to a video. In Jesus name, amen. Oh, amen. Man, this is so good. I hope they bring us some more chips to I go with that salsa, right? <laughs> Hey, it's so fun we can come together and share about our own. Yes. Everyone did different See You Go. So, yeah, Sheila, crazy. what'd you do? I did a prayer walk through my neighborhood, and oh, I wow. figure I don't know everybody in these homes, but yep. God knows their yeah. names yeah. and their needs. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Amen. Very so cool. cool. Yeah. Well, it's going to be cool to see what happens in weeks to come. Yeah. Yeah? So Sam, true. what'd you do? So in our See You Go, we went to the assisted living home, and my mom delivered a great message about the way. Nice. And there's usually a 102 year old who attends a service there. Yeah. <laughs> she's so awesome. Yo, that's yeah. that she's talks. so awesome. Yeah, she's pretty bright. That's Very awesome. Cool. Yeah. We did a treasure hunt and we wrote down clues, prayed about it, and those clues led us to this guy who needed prayer for healing. So we got to pray and wow. believe for that. Yeah, it was so neat. I wish we could see what happened. I know. I know. It was cool. so good. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. awesome. Okay, well, I think before I eat, I need to go to the restroom, okay? But y'all can go ahead, that's okay. Oh, no, 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 we'll wait, right? Yeah, we'll okay. wait. Okay. You know what, Jane, I'll come with you, okay? Um, I'll come on, Sheila, let's yeah, go. Let's go. It's so good, I'm ready to eat. Yeah. Man, why do girls always go to the bathroom together? I know, it's like two by two. Yeah, Noah's Ark was like 4,000 years ago, so they should have stopped that. Right? <laughs> All right, so 
Well, the, the answer to that question, that would be great to enter in the chat. Why do women tend to go to the bathroom together? That would be really cool. We'd love to hear your answers to that. But here's a bigger question for you, and that is this. Why did Jesus send people out two by two? I want you to think about it. Um, Mark chapter 6, verse 7. Jesus has got his 12, right? And it says that he sent them out, giving them authority over impure spirits, but he sent them out two by two. And then it says later when he sent out 72, you can read about that in the book of Luke chapter 10. When he sent out the 72, it said he sent them out two by two. So, so what's the answer to that question? Why do you believe that Jesus sent people out two by two? Well, we're going to talk about that all night long, and it's going to have a tremendous impact on your ministry because as you start recognizing the power of two by two, you're going to realize that God can do way more in and through you than you ever thought possible. For instance, in your circles of impact. As you think about your circles of impact, the going out that we've just been hearing all these testimonies about on the See You Go experiences and other places where you're called out, so many people feel like, I can't do it. But it's amazing the power of joining up with someone else. And we're going to hear a great testimony about that um, as two brothers share about an experience that they had. Yeah. Hey, guys. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm here with my good friend, Kevin Flannery. Hello. Man, this is just, you're going to be blessed by this story. I just know it. So, Kevin, there, there's a story that where you, someone invited you to go out into the community and pray, and that's kind of something you had never done before. So, you know, tell me about that. So, uh, it turned out that you happened to be one of the guys that came with us. Right. Um, it was probably one of the scariest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Uh, I had a lot of uh, anxiety over it. I think it was about a week we planned ahead of time. Yeah. And it was like the clock was ticking in my head. It's time, it's time, it's time. That morning, I was praying with my wife. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm really scared. I don't know how I'm going right. to be received. Um, and, you know, God just told me, he's like, no, this is going to be good. You're really going to enjoy it. So uh, it turned out to be just wonderful. Yeah. So there's, what I'm hearing is there was some nerves leading up to it. And, and you know, things just kind of felt oh, how can I get out of this kind of thing? And, kind you know, of. looking for a way out. But you said later on afterwards, we talked and you said that having someone invite you to do that and go out was important. And why, tell us why that was important for you. I never would have done it on my own. I don't think I had the courage uh -huh. to do it myself. Um, I'm not scared of a whole lot of stuff, but I was petrified. Right. Just acceptance. Um, what were people going to think? Think I'm crazy. Um, someone call the cops on this guy. He's, you know, he's in, involved, in, engaged in my space. But it helped that it was someone that I trusted. Right. And that it came from a place of faith. Right. Um, coming to this family, the Christ United family, is one of the best things that's ever happened to my life because it helped lead me to Christ and understand that my relationship with Christ is really what matters. And I was excited to share that. I just didn't know that I was going to be able to do it without scaring people off. <laughs> right. So what I'm hearing is it, the, the fact that someone invited you, helped you step out of your comfort zone in the two by two, basically. So when you got to the, I think it was a food line that we went to. It was. And when you got there, we all kind of prayed and split up. And then we went our kind of our separate ways and just began to ask God, hey, who is it I'm supposed to pray for? And to what did what was that like what um so the, the the prayer ahead of time was very helpful right uh, it was a powerful prayer and i literally got chills up and down my spine just all right here we go my heart was racing um some people i didn't i think i was scared to go talk to them but there was others that i did uh there's one person turns out that had just walked out of the bar it was very receptive to me right. praying with them and was kind of emotional um I don't know the feeling that I got from the pe the reception from the people that were thankful mm -hmm. and that understood like that it was coming from the right place. And we were really just inviting them into the relationship that I now knew. Uh, it, I just, it's hard for me to even put into words, even to this day. And I've taken that, that message to our, led into our C group with my C group brothers that we started off in a private place where nobody could see us at six o'clock right. every Monday morning. And we decided, well, we're not doing any discipling here. So we decided to go to a place, it's a Duncan. We're right, we front and center. 
Um, everybody knows us there now, but we make sure, and I've got a loud mouth, obviously, the whole, the whole group of us does. And uh, we've got more people to join the group because they kind of eavesdrop. They hear what we're talking wow. about. Are you guys Christians? And we're like, the day that that happened, we had an extra seat that we had sitting there. And we said it was for Jesus, kind of joking. And a retired pastor was walking out and walking and he heard us and he asked us that. He comes all the time now and then his soon-to-be son-in-law is now one of our secret brothers. Uh, he's a retired army ranger that it couldn't have come at a better time in his life. And then we've prayed over people that come in and you know they ask us questions and it's just it's really fulfilling for us. It got me over my fear to praise God in front of others and to be thankful for him saving me and saving others and that the relationship is something he wants us all to have, right? Right. So let me make sure I'm understanding that instance of someone inviting you out, getting you out of your comfort zone, going two by two, helped you get into a place where now you're getting more comfortable being in public, talking to people about Jesus. And did I hear right that new people from outside of Christ United, haven't seen them, met mm -hmm. them before, are now joining your C group because you guys made that decision that, hey, we need to be out in public. We need to be able to let people see us in this light knowing that we're worshiping and learning about God here. So that instance of somebody asking you two by two to go out helped propel you into that. that a absolutely. Um, and, and our secret brothers, um, you know, right. you know, uh, Brian, the, cause I tell the story a lot now where it's, a, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to call it a badge of honor, but I'm proud that I was able to get over the fear. Yeah. I don't even, probably, probably not, might, might not be the right word. I'm just thankful to God that he got me over the fear. So um, it has, the, the people that have joined is because they heard us talking. We purposely make sure people hear us praying and talking and going through scripture and asking questions. Um, and that has bled into, uh, we have a prayer chain that we all the right. time are constantly sharing prayers with each other. Uh, one of the guys from one of my secret brother's work is now a part of our group and his girlfriend is now involved and we're trying to create another C group with them wow. for the women involved. So it's, it bled into the C group and it's turned into, hey, like we're all getting away from the fear of praising God to everybody and sharing his word. Man, so we got just a little bit of time left and something that Kevin shared with me a little earlier, I, I just thought fit into this so well that you shared that your C group is now talking about, hey, we need to go do the two by two out in the community somewhere. We're going to make a plan to do that. Share a little bit about that, how that's come about and where it came from. So it, it came from that first time that, that we went out to the food lion and we're praying over people. And uh, if you remember correctly, the last person that we encountered really needed it. And he had prayed for God to yeah. give him a sign. Yeah. And we all cried in front of <laughs> right outside the door, arms around each other, really a bunch of grown that. men. Right. Um, but so we're looking for opportunities to go do that. Now we're trying to find the right opportunity. We've talked about certain different things. I'm in an industry in the, the business that I'm in that the people aren't, they're not the type of people that you would expect to uh, uh -huh. praise Jesus. And I, so I always find a way to interject, have a blessed day by the grace of God. It's all by God's glory that I'm able to right. do whatever. And it's leading me into conversations with some that surprise me that Man. I wouldn't know. So we're trying to get it in, and my secret brothers are doing the same thing. We're just always trying to find a way to plant that mustard seed. Man, that y'all, this is just a great story of someone set an example, invited another person to come and do it. They did it, and God has taken them, given them the strength to just continue on and keep planting seeds and planting seeds. Man, what a beautiful story. Kevin, thanks for coming thank, and sharing that. Thank you. And I think I, now I we're going to jump back over to Sheila and Ray. Wow, that's pretty amazing, right? Yes. What about you, Ray? The first time that you were asked to go on a treasure hunt or to go out and pray, were you scared at all? Yes, yes, I was very scared. So what made you go through and do it? It's kind of tough. Uh, I really felt like going because I felt like God was telling me to go. And I um, also felt very self-centered if I didn't go. Wow, that's convicting, right? Um, yeah, because uh, you know what? It is not about us. It's about God. It's about what Jesus is doing. And um, when we move out of the way, he can work mightily, right? Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, that's pretty powerful. All right, well, so we have some answers to our social media questions. So you want to read some of those? Two favorite animals. Miss Debbie said her two favorite animals are her dog, Lucy, and her cat. That's right. What about your two favorite? What are your two favorite? Uh, I'm going to have to go with a dolphin and a monkey. Dolphin and a monkey. Yes. All right. <laughs> they won't be found in the same arena, hopefully. <laughs> uh, mine is a lion and a camel. I think those would be, would be my two favorite. All right. Well, so I think we are headed over to a teaching from Pastor Jeff. So uh, thank you so much, um, Kevin, for, for sharing that story. Uh, Robert, what a beautiful story. Thank you so much uh, to uh, you guys host, hosting tonight. And... Um, and just the image of the, the dolphin and the monkey is never going to get out. I'm just, just picturing a monkey riding a dolphin or something. It's awesome. But anyway, so, uh, so, so where we're going to be right now is answering the question, why? And so one of, the, one of the things you listened to as Kevin was sharing, as Kevin said, we learned when I went two by two with somebody, I learned that I could because this other person was doing it. And then he said, then I'm in a place now where I'm comfortable doing it. And he's feeling led that he would do it um, along with others. So, so please get this. One of the reasons that many people believe that Jesus launched out his initial ministry, the first time he sent people out, it was two by two. One of those reasons is that we need to learn to not do things alone, but to do things bringing others along that they can learn from us. So when Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And he says, you'll hear him use that, my example, my example, my example, very, very often. So those who walk together um, learn from each other. And so as you are a, a follower of Christ, if you'll invite people along with you, they will be empowered and learn from that process. That's one reason. Um, thank you, Kevin, for sharing that. Another reason is this. Um, Kevin talked about the fear factor of just going out. That's a very scary thing. Um, and very often fear keeps people back. And so people are afraid to step out. But it's amazing how having someone with you changes that. So the wisdom of God in having you go two by two is found first in the wisdom of Solomon. Um, as the Lord revealed to Solomon this truth from Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. It says this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. He said, in, in, in the same way, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Now, I want you to know that Kevin and Robert didn't lie down together, but they did protect each other. So he goes on and says, in the end, he says this. He says, two can be, I mean, one can be overpowered, but two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. So there's that interesting reality that when you're with someone else, there's the strength that comes um, from that partnership with someone else, the strength to overcome the fear of stepping out, the strength to be able to pick each other up, to be able to share when you're feeling rejection and you're with some, someone else, the sharing of that rejection lessens the rejection. When you're feeling joy, the joy that you experience takes it to another level. So there's also the shared experience that you have where you're able to pick each other up out of discouragement, you're able to rejoice together and, and move forward in, in ministry together. So think about it. Who is God calling you to partner in ministry with? It's more than just sitting around a C group talking, but it is the desire of God that you be actually ministering together, going out and taking big steps of faith together. Now, what we're going to learn is, is that that practice continued on as Jesus built his church um, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it was clear that when he sent people out, the Holy Spirit prompted them to send them two by two. So Jesus kept that process up. And we're going to talk more about that. But first, we're going to hear about some sisters that were sent out to start a new C group and how two by two um, really helped them to step out and have the courage uh, to obey and follow Jesus. So, hey, guys. Um, hey, Discipleship Live. We're so excited. I'm actually here um, with my sweet sisters in Christ, Shelly and Lainey. <laughs> so, 
they are in Colombia. And so we are joining together to just kind of talk about their journey in C groups in the whole two by two. Um, life is better together and ministry is better and stronger together when we live life and serve together. So we're going to start by, um, I'm going to ask you guys really just to start off by sharing your story of um, how you knew each other and then how you became connected in ministry. And then we'll dive into the C group part, if that makes any sense, especially since you're in Columbia and you're not here um, here literally with us at Christ United, but you're Christ United in Columbia. So share about how you knew each other and then how God called you into ministry together. Do the first part of the second. Okay. Um, well, actually, Shelly and I met um, uh, at a private school here in Columbia, South Carolina. Our boys are the same age. Okay. Um, we each have a son and they are both the same age. And we um, they actually, they began preschool together at Harmony. Oh, it's wow. a um, pre preschool through fifth grade and we met then when they were in preschool and they're 16 now so oh, wow. so we've known each other for quite a while and we started our journey then as really good friends and um, we worked through um, we started at, at a different church and I'll kind of let Shelly go into that part of it but mm -hmm. we we've been friends um, for 11 years and it started oh, wow. out with school and then we moved into our relationship has so many levels now yeah. different layers so yes awesome. uh what what we found yes as laney said we've been we've been close for a long time but our relationship became so much stronger once we became more connected in the lord mm -hmm. and uh we did we did attend a church together but uh we just didn't feel um really connected to um to that church and so when my sister-in-law cat stenhouse yeah um became saved and a part of Christ United and started talking about it. I was like, well, we were like, we want some of that. We want to, we want, we want to yes. grow in the Lord too. And so it was just really amazing how um, the Lord was able to use us to um, start a secret together. Um, we start, actually started with the prayer calls mm -hmm. okay. and um, we committed to, we, we were accountable to each other and committed by um, participating with the calls every day. And then we would even pray together. Um, wow. and do pray together after the calls just just a minute or so mm -hmm. um we've stayed connected through our c group that mm -hmm. we were that we started um just through texts through chats messages yeah. phone calls living life together um it's just been a really amazing journey journey and yeah. we were definitely stronger in the lord because absolutely. of our relationship absolutely uh, i love that i love that so we kind of got to know each other i think if I, my memory is right is when God started calling you into C group leadership right and that's how we got connected and we had phone calls and I think zoom too right to be yeah. sure about C group so I know you said that you you guys have been part of our our calls and actually Shelly you lead a call right one of our calls yes we both yeah. do you both lead a prayer call, which is so awesome. So guys, here's the, it doesn't matter where you live. You can be on our prayer calls. You can lead a prayer call. It's phenomenal. Actually, we have another um, sister from Maine leading a prayer call now too. So that's a little rabbit trail just for everybody out there. So as God was pressing on your heart, possibly about starting a C group in Columbia, um, did it happen for both of you at the same time or did one of you feel pulled or called and then you mentioned it to the other or how did that happen well i shelly we kind of talked about it but shelly's the one that really um i guess from from what she had heard from kat yeah and janine and that whole group yes. that they had such a, an amazing experience with it I, she got more information and Shelly shared it with me and she was on fire about it. Yes. She's like, we've got to do this and we can do this in Columbia yeah. because we're not there, you know, we're three hours away, but we were just talking about it before we did this, um, started this Zoom is we feel so much more connected and we're three hours away. That's you know, it's like, I, I, I feel it. like it's, it's something that we couldn't get right down the street when we went yeah. to the, and not that I'm saying that they're doing anything wrong we just right. 
it didn't work there because we were meant to find Christ United and right. we did. And right. now we, you know, Shelly leads the 8 a.m. on Sundays. I leave, lead the 8 a.m. on Wednesdays. And that's just another layer of it. That just yeah. started from getting to know the prayer calls and then being asked to do one. It was like, what? And yes. then it was like, step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, be careful what you pray for because the Lord just jumped in and was like, y'all are going to take it to another level. And then with these, when the C group started, it's just yeah. been an amazing opportunity to really take that relationship with the Lord and one another to a whole nother level. And I love your emphasis. So it seems like the whole time both of you've been talking has been on relationship with Jesus and with each other. Um, can you share maybe how it's been helpful that you started the C group together instead of say one of you said, oh, I'm going to start a C group. Like, is it better together? Do you think it's easier because you were paired two by two or if you'd gone on your own would that have been easier what do you think um is the great part of it well i think um it's it's definitely easier being a team because when one or the other can't um hold a certain part of the meeting we take turns in our secret leading it yeah um and so we can help one another encourage one another strengthen one another um the whole process um, as even praying into uh, before the meetings, just the mm -hmm. whole, everything is, is yeah. so much better having someone coming to alongside you to, to help along the way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I'd like to add that she and I both are, have a fear of you know, public speaking <laughs> and uh, getting in front of a camera and yet um, the Lord has just really worked wow. through us. And it's really because of, it's just really what the Lord has, has done. And, and anyway, we're just very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Especially since now we have you um, on camera <laughs> and, <laughs> and it will be going out there. I didn't even know that you had that fear. So obviously God is overcoming that. And mm -hmm. it's so beautiful that way. Uh, what are some ways that some obstacles or, or some, um, you know, some things you've learned along the way, as C group leaders that have made it helpful to be able to be together as your C group progressed. And your C group's on Zoom, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So share how, how you guys have shared successes and also have problems solved together. Does that make sense? It does. Um, and we've actually, it's really cool that we've been able to, um, we have been as a group, we've been through some challenges. Yeah. And each of us have been able to express that in um, our time together. You know, we, we have a really hard time keeping it at an hour and a half yeah. wow. <laughs> because we get into, it's not just doing, you know, following the protocol and yeah. following the guidelines, but um, you know, the, of course, the longer that we've been together, we've been able to um, feel comfortable sharing, you know, things that are troubling us and yeah. things that we can work to. We've been working on praying as a team um, each week. We like every day we've been sending out um, little inspirational messages to one another and like, what can I pray for you today? We send the, the prayer requests um, across the text, you know, like the team that. text that we have so that we can stay consistent and, and intentional with everything that we're, um, you know, we're working through each and every day. And in giving that. glory to the Lord when he does, you know, those blessings that we already have and the ones that are coming that we don't even know about yet. I love that. I love and that. I'd like to add that when we do have challenges, um, we are C group, each other will will call each other out and say, hey, you know, this is the enemy coming in or oh, we need to band yeah. together. Or, hey, nice. something's happening. This isn't right. Let's let's see what we can do to, to re to re strengthen. On what we're doing because this really is about the lord i love that so much and our time has flown flown by even quicker than the studio i didn't know how that was going to work or how it would feel but um as we leave um i as we leave this time together i just want to encourage you and just so beautiful how god does tell us how when we're together 
that he he works in us together and how he worked through his disciples. He sent them out together and he's sending us out together. And I love how connected you are to, to us. I say here in Myrtle Beach, but we're all over the place now, but I kind of feel, you know, our anchor here and, and we would love um, always whenever we can see you in person, mm. that would be great. Um, Shelly was at my house once to pick up the secret guides, right? With Kat. And so um, that is awesome. I just want to encourage you as you complete Secret 2021 and you really pray about where God's leading you for C groups in 2022 with your C group. I just encourage you all to just stay to be able to pair up together. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so guys, we just want to share our story with you. And um, I think now, just like in person, I never really know where it's going back to, but I think it's going back to the anchors. So God bless. Wow, thank you, Jane. All right, so what stood out to you about that interview? What stood out to me was that they said, no matter what, that whenever they had the two of them, it always made each other better. You know, they could encourage each other, and they were both nervous at the beginning, mm -hmm. but now that they've been working together as a pair, I don't think they're scared anymore. I think they... They run two prayer calls on Sunday and Wednesday mm -hmm. at 8 a.m., and they also lead a C group, so yeah. that's what stood out to me. That's really good. That's important, and I know uh, we were talking about strength when we're together, and so do you have any examples about that, like when having two with anything was better than you yourself? Yes. So today, um, my grandma my grandpa were going to go do a festival down in Aner. And th my grandma has been struggling a little bit with her back. She's been in a lot of pain. And we needed to move a cooker. And I was trying to move it by myself because I wanted to be a good grandson and uh, maybe get a little treat later. <laughs> but I wanted to move it by myself so that I could help her out. And uh, she ended up helping me because I'm not that big of a person. <laughs> but she ended up helping me. And uh, we did it as a team. And so there's more strength in numbers. Did you still get a treat or not? So yes, much? I okay. did. All right, good. I'm glad about that. Well, I tell you what, that fear of public speaking and, and fear of stepping out, it's a real thing. As a matter of fact, I heard something a long time ago that um, there are number one and number two fear. Number one fear is public speaking. And the number two fear is death. So that basically means that most people would rather be in the casket than doing the eulogy at a funeral. I don't know what that has to do with tonight, but it just made me think of it, so I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, but, you know, strength in numbers, we are going to talk about strength in numbers as far as see you at home and what happens there. And so we're going over to Pastor Jeff. <laughs> I love it. Okay, guys, so... Uh, what we're learning, I want you to think about the why. So, so why Jesus sent out two by two, why he, by his Holy Spirit, um, encouraged the early church to do that. Read Acts chapter 13, and you'll see there where they selected Paul and Barnabas by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's interesting, Paul and Barnabas had already spent a year together. They got to know each other. They, they, had, they had relationship. And so when it came to God sending them out, they had relationship. You notice the same thing was true between Shelley and Laney. They had relationship, and it made it easier for them to step out. Also notice this. Paul and Barnabas were leaving a group of people that they had been around for an entire year. They had been in Antioch for a year. And so as they were stepping out of their comfort zone, of the people that they were associated with and ready to, to live life with, and they were being sent out to a journey, um, to have that partner that was going with them very, very empowering and very important. So just as, as our sisters just shared, I want you, we want you to begin thinking, oh God, could you actually be using someone else like you did between Paul and Barnabas? Um, later, after Paul and Barnabas had come into dispute over uh, John Mark, who was a guy who had abandoned them while they were on their missionary journey, um, and the two of those guys decided not to go on journey together, guess what? They both picked up somebody. Barnabas picked up Mark, 
And Paul picked up Silas and they went out. They were still doing that thing of sharing the journey with somebody that they could care about and love. Now, I want to, but we want to ask you to begin praying, God, who in my circle are you calling me to potentially partner up with to start a new C group? Do not think of that as something next year. Think of that as now. Like right now. I really want you to get that, get hold of that. We are not encouraging you to wait and say, okay, January of next year, I'm going to start a new group. You can stay in the group that you're in, but we want to encourage you that you and potentially one of your other C group members begin talking about, could we step out and start a new group? If you think you don't have anybody to start a group with, believe me, there are so many people who are ready to discover what it means to follow and love Jesus, what, what God has to say to their lives. Um, I want you to have this question in mind. Um, it's very much like what Kevin was sharing. Uh, Kevin and, and his guys talked to somebody in the Dunkin' Donuts, and basically they were saying, would you like to to dig in and discover what God has to say. Because if you can say to someone else, Jesus has radically changed my life. And learning what he says is true about himself and true about me has changed my life. Would you be interested in discovering what the Bible says about you, about um, your relationship with God? And what you're going to find out is that lots of people are very interested in that discovery. In fact, you don't have to know anybody long at all. If it's one of those people like Kevin was talking about, that we go out and we just pray for someone, we meet someone and we, we, and we ask them, is there something that God could do in your life that could make a difference today? Having prayed for them and knowing that, that there's a little piece of their life that you know about, you could immediately say to them, would you like to discover more about what God has to say um, about your life and what he has to offer you? Believe me, people are ready, but you ask yourself this question. How many of those invitations have you extended? Probably very few, and probably it's been because in your mind you've been thinking, I'm not ready. But this two-by-two two may put you in a spot to where you're able to be ready and start extending those invitations, and let's see what God does. It might be as great as what God did in Columbia. So as we're talking about that, we're now going to switch gears and talk about how we could do the same thing when it comes to stepping out to start See You at Home communities. And so uh, Shelly and Laney, I want you all to be thinking about this in Columbia as we hear a story about how two-by-two two can help you step out to actually start a church in home um, and starting a See You at Home community. That's right, and uh, it's been so exciting because uh, that's also the same model we're doing with See You at Home is yeah, let's start See You at Home communities, but we want to have See You at Home communities in every neighborhood throughout the Grand Strand and, and even in Columbia, I mean, a a everywhere. And um, it's so cool. I know you guys have been in, you've gone to several See You at Homes. And um, so j just describe like See You at Home for you guys. What, like, what, what, what is that for you guys? What does it mean to you? You going first or am I going first? That's a neat, you go, go. Go. <laughs> um, I was a little skeptical about See You at mm -hmm. Home at first, but after going to some and just diving into the discussion questions and being with groups of people and just relating to each other in small groups like that has really been just like incredible, like taking church to a whole nother level. Yeah. So that's been awesome. Yeah. Um, right up front. I was pretty resistant myself, mm -hmm. uh, but quite different reasons. I hate watching myself on TV <laughs> so I'm the same way. much, yes. and I, I feel worse for you. you yeah. You're up there like 45 minutes, yeah. sometimes an hour if you're really on a roll. <laughs> so like, I'm, like, I'm like, oh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah, um, I'm so according to Michael anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, so I would say the first time that I, on purpose, told myself to be active in that discussion time because we had been through discussion time way sure. before but like when I was like oh no 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 I got in kind of my head I'm be intentional about this mm -hmm. like it was like oh that's totally different you know being like real vulnerable yeah. and like I saw that being reciprocated around the room um and yeah so that's that's what that's been like 
That's awesome. And and I know you guys have been to, uh, you know to ours, which has been cool. And you guys actually got connected with another couple that yeah. was uh, that was coming to um, our see at home, Tar and Dusty, who wanted to be here tonight, but they had to work tonight. So we miss you guys. Um, Whole bunches. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the two of you, you know, you guys and that you guys have actually stepped out and launched another see at home out of the one that that, that we were doing. So. Yeah. Um, what, what is it, knowing that you have gone to a couple of different CU at homes and that you've tried inviting people before and sometimes you get no's and, and then it's like, oh, what do we do? What, what is it like stepping out and launching a CU at home with another couple? Well, now that we are with another couple, we're kind of like a team mm-hmm. and we can help encourage each other and in inviting people and reaching out to people. <clears throat> hey, have you... Um, invited anyone to our CU at home or, you know, how can we help y'all reach out to others or just um, working as a team together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we get to pool. We both have different pools of people that we know. Yeah. Like they're going to know, Dusty and Tara are going to know a plethora of people that Maddie and I don't. So like we get to work as a team mm-hmm. to pull people together and work together with that. Um, we've even had a, uh, a, a nice lady that came for her first CU at home experience, like period, D- didn't even, or first Christ United experience. Wow, that's um, awesome. Well, third, she had come to a, yeah. a couple in person, mm-hmm. um, but she moved from being online to coming to uh, CU uh, Go to a CU Together and then moved into our you know, CU at home. And that was really cool to watch how she became like, like really open and um, just really transparent that, that for CU at home. She's wonderful lady i'm very blessed to meet and, her and and what does it mean to you guys for because that's obviously yeah that's how see what homes are supposed to grow and expand is that we love being together right. and love y'all ha- having y'all w- in our see you at home but man we we launch another one and now there's room for someone else yeah, yeah. to join so and what l- does that mean for to actually see that happen that man someone who you know what they they, they were new to christ united and boom there was an there was a home for them to get connected yeah. in how does that you know, resonate with you guys. For me, that was really like, kind of like an aha moment. Yeah. Um, just like it felt good. Like it felt right. It's like, oh, like it this works. works. Yeah. <laughs> this works. Um, to the two by two kind of standpoint, if it had just been like me or Maddie and the woman showed up <laughs> and we're like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, and, or just Dusty and Tara, like, and they were just like, hey, you know, neither one of us couples are awkward couples. If you guys know us, we're pretty like, Hunky dory, like pretty <laughs> personable, but still like bringing people in. If it's just like the one couple or just the the sure. one host, even just you got one host and it's just you. That that could have been the turn. God does what He wants to do, but it, yep. I see it being much more fruitful mm-hmm. when you are partnering with uh, another group or another couple to do it together and bring people together. Sure. And probably encouraging as well that, you know, yeah. if, if you're inviting somebody, you're inviting people and, oh, you keep getting no's, no's, no's. It's like, oh, well, I guess we're just going to be at home alone, you know, for, yeah. for, for see you at home this week. And you've got, you know, someone else, another one with you. That's right. To, to still like a, like, hey, we're still going to do this together. That's it's, right. It's, it's not a downer to where you don't feel like you couldn't try again next week. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, God, I just want to thank you guys so much just for your hearts and just how open and honest you are and how you, you step out and do that. And um, and look, at, at any time you want to come back to RC at home and, and hear worship from me, you know, that's that's perfectly okay. I'm sure you learn a lot. Um, <laughs> but but seriously, just thank you guys for what you do and just having the heart of, you know what, this it can be a little off. It can be a little weird, but man, it works when you're obedient and you step out and do what God is calling you to do. So man, love you guys. And thank you so much for, for, for what you guys do. Pastor Jeff, back to you, man. Thank you all so much at home. Please tune in because as you listen to, to Casey and Maddie, what you're beginning to realize is God is opening up something for you that maybe you never considered. And that is that something that seemed almost impossible for me to do alone, that if I'm partnered with someone else, I could actually find myself enjoying that experience. That's exactly what God um, has shown us in his word, that people were empowered to go out and do as he sent his disciples out, as he sent the, um, the, the apostles out in the early church to go out. Um, the reality is, is he's sending you out. So please pray now. 
and say, God, is there somebody else that I could connect with? If you're already in a CU at home, think about other people in your CU at home and say, who else in that CU at home do I feel enough connection with that I could talk to them about, hey, why don't we consider stepping out and starting a new CU at home community? Maybe you're not in a CU at home. And you have other folks that you know in the body of Christ, of Christ United, that you would reach out to them and say, hey, would you prayerfully consider starting that? Especially if you're in a C group and you have not yet started to see you at home. What we want to encourage you to do is look now at your C group stepping out to start a CU at home. Maybe some of your folks are engaged already and others are not. But for those who are not yet engaged, step out. And watch what God can do when you partner with someone else. Now, we're going to go into the most important piece that we hit here at the end. Um, and that is this. Why? Why would you even want to step out? Why would Jesus send them out two by two? I want you to notice that Jesus spent time building these 12 guys together to where they would lay down their lives for each other. He actually said greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their lives for their friends. That was his will, that they have that kind of depth of love for each other. They would lay down their lives for each other kind of love. He wanted that love for others enough to take those 12 guys and say, okay, two by two, I'm going to send you out. You're going to be out of your comfort zone, and you're going to begin to go and share. And ultimately, he began to send them out and, and the same way for the early church. He's got Paul and Barnabas. As soon as Paul came to know Christ, Barnabas stepped in to walk alongside him. Son of encouragement is Barnabas' uh, title. And then brought into a community. And this community is growing um, as they are uh, together in Antioch. And, and as they are there and they're growing in their love uh, for each other. Um, imagine this, that we as Christians could stop right there and say, Okay, as long as I have somebody, I'm okay. And God's saying, as long as there's somebody that doesn't have somebody, it's not okay. As long as there's somebody who doesn't know me, it's not okay. It is imperative that you step out. But to help us in stepping out, he loves us enough to say, I'm going to partner you with somebody that you already love, already know, already have connection with. So as you step out, you aren't leaving um, your entire sense of community, but you are deepening a relationship with someone as you step out with them. You ever been on a road trip? If you've ever been on a road trip, just picked up somebody and say, come on, we're just going to go and, and we're going to take a trip. We're going to have an adventure. We're going to go um, do something together. When you have that kind of experience with somebody, it deepens that relationship with that somebody. Guys, when you do something eternally significant with someone else, even as, uh, as Shelly and Laney were sharing, even through the struggles you grow, even through the challenges you grow, and you grow to love each other in a deeper way than you could ever think possible. So please hear this. God wants you not to lose relationship. He wants you to take relationship to another level. You stepping out of a C group to start a new C group with someone else that you're already connected with will deepen that relationship and help move you into deeper love and deeper relationship than you've ever had before. Same thing for your CU at home community. If you partner with somebody to go out and step out to make a difference in that way, you're going to find yourself deepening relationships. But far more importantly, you're going to find yourself doing what Jesus commissioned us to do. Until everybody knows him, the job is not done. And he's saying, you've got to go let people know who I am. Until everybody has somebody, you've got to go bring them into the body, into the family, into relationship. You've got to go make a place for people who don't have a place. But I'm going to let you do that with people that you love. Lord God, we pray together in Jesus' name that for people who have been just hesitant, just felt like they couldn't do it, that tonight through these beautiful testimonies that they are realizing now that, yes, they can. Just like Kevin stepping out into to, to the circles of impact to pray with people and do things he never thought he could do, that they're thinking tonight, I can. I can do it two by two with someone else. I can do it. 
And we pray right now for the person who's in a C group and has never stepped out and felt like I can't. Maybe tried to step out one time and got disappointed and, and someone didn't show up and they felt discouraged and quit. That tonight they're going to realize if I just partner with one other person, we can step out and we can make a powerful impact. Lord, we pray tonight in Jesus' name that new See You at Home communities are being birthed in this moment. That right now you're putting on the hearts of people others that they're going to reach out to and say, come on, will you go with me? Just like uh, these precious couples. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Casey and Maddie, for sharing. Um, thank you, Lord, that you'll make those same kind of connections with others. And just like Tara and Dusty and Casey and Maddie, that people will step out. And create new places, new homes, new church families. And that, Lord God, more than anything else, they'll make a place for people that is eternal. In a relationship with you that will change their eternity. We praise you that we'll share that experience and we'll deepen relationships deeper than ever before. My brothers and sisters, he's talking to you tonight about not leaving relationships, but about deepening relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go back over to our awesome host team. God bless you all. Yeah. Woohoo. That was great. Well, two by two, Ray, right? Yes, Two by two. And so there's strength in numbers. Uh, the fear, Jesus can step through all of that, stepping out. And I think that Shelly said something about um, the upcoming blessings, you know, stepping out in faith and receiving those upcoming blessings. And I tell you what, with uh, stepping out in faith in my neighborhood with the, with the women that are in my C group, over the past six months, it has been incredible, the deepening of that relationship, just what Jeff was just talking about. And what about you with your group? You see a deepening in your relationship with the other students? Yes, ma'am. I uh, feel in my C group, who is run by uh, Sir Jeremy. Sir Jeremy. Um, <laughs> I feel like... Throughout our time together every Sunday, we uh, learn new things about each other and we uh, get deeper with each other. And that's the one place where we all feel safe sharing stuff that we wouldn't normally share with anybody else. But I do feel that sometimes it's very scary to share mm -hmm. with those who uh, you, you don't know that much, but it's really worth it. Yeah, it is really worth it. Thanks for that, Ray. That was amazing. All right. Yeah, give him a hand. Woohoo! All righty. Well, so be praying about who God has for you because he will answer those prayers. He does it every time. And so, um, listen, tomorrow we are having Bible study. It's either here in the Hub 820 or we also have it on Zoom. We have daily prayer calls, 5, 6, 7, and 8 a.m. Phenomenal time to connect. And um, see you at home this weekend. This Sunday is See You at Home Sunday. So if you don't have a See You at Home, contact us. Go on the website, um, crisislove.org. Contact us so that we can get you connected there. And otherwise, Ray, why don't you pray everybody out? Yes, All right. Dear God, thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to uh, come together and share our time with you and what you have done in our lives i uh, ask that you bless our time tomorrow at 8 20 here mm -hmm. at the hub and uh, i pray that everybody here has safe travels back to their house and i pray that you just bless our, the rest of our week and uh thank you god amen mm -hmm. amen thanks ray it was great doing this with you all right thanks for joining us Good night, everybody.